Hello and welcome to Little Things. Today's episode is called Celebrate Beginnings because I hope you do just that. Hey, it's Amber L.B. Swenson, wife, mother, worrier, overthinker, type A, holding on to God and his promises to get me through the day. Thanks for joining me to explore everyday issues from a biblical perspective so we can all know and love God more. So let me ask you, how are your New Year's resolutions going? Have you been keeping them? Have you even made any? Or did you even think about ways that you could live differently or things that you want to do differently in your life? If you didn't, I hope that you will consider maybe doing so now. Not New Year's resolutions so much as making those good changes that you have always wanted to begin. So for instance, you know, I am a huge advocate for reading the Bible. And, you know, whether you start your day or end your day with the Bible, it it makes no difference. If you have um, some Bible reading time or devotion during your lunch hour, those are great things. Doesn't matter. Now is as good a time as any to start reading the Word, getting into the Bible, or listening to it on your favorite Bible app. However you get into it, great. Um, Are you thinking about making a change in your diet or exercise routine? Or have you decided that this is the year right here? This is the year that you are going to be more patient. You're going to be more loving. You're going to make sure that you do not yell at your children or (laughs) any of those things that you know are pet sins and you really need to work on. And you've been putting it off or justifying it. And now is just as good a time as any to say, I need to start something. I need to get this under control. I need a little self-control that I haven't had. And so I want to encourage you that as you do those things, to celebrate the beginning. Celebrate, mark it down on your calendar, um, Put the date down and as you make it one week, celebrate it. I've gone one week reading my Bible or a month or six weeks or two months or six months, whatever. Celebrate the beginnings. Celebrate the fact that you're persevering. Why? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Why celebrate the beginnings? Well, you know, God was a pretty good... um, commemorator. In both the Old and the New Testament, we see he actually was pretty good at at reminding the people of certain things. So in the Old Testament, he um, instructed the people to celebrate the Passover every year. It was a big deal that they remember that God was the one who brought them out of slavery, out of the hands of the Egyptians, parted the waters of the Red Sea, and delivered them. That was a big, big deal. And of course, it was setting them up for realizing that, you know, Jesus was going to be the Passover lamb. But God wanted to make sure that they commemorated this huge event that took place. And he wanted them to do it every year. Now, the people didn't do so well. There was a time when the book of the law kind of got lost and the people forgot. Um, And, you know, when they forgot who God was and what he had done for them, their lives certainly showed it. So there was a reason that God wanted them to remember. Remember what I did for you. Remember who I am. In the New Testament, when Jesus was just about to be arrested, he had one last meal with his disciples and he instituted the Lord's Supper. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Remember me. Remember what I'm doing. Of course, at the time, the disciples didn't exactly know what he was doing. Now we know that wine, the shedding of God, of his blood for us, um, you know, it's a huge thing that we have to remember. So God was all about making sure that we remember important things. And when we begin, it's sort of like putting the stick in the sand, saying this far and no further, like I am right here 
I am doing something different. (laughs) I am making a change and I'm not turning back. And that is worth commemorating. Reason number two to celebrate beginnings is because God delights in them. So in the book of Zechariah, chapter four, we come across this passage, and I love the way the New Living Translation puts it. It says, do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Did you hear that? (laughs) If God is cheering you on, when you choose a healthier lifestyle, when you choose to honor him by putting him first, when you choose to honor him in the way that you live, if God is cheering you on, then I think that's worth celebrating. God loves beginnings, no matter how small they are. He's not up there going, well, you know, it's fine. You ran 10 minutes today, but talk to me after you've done a marathon. No, he is like, sister, you have done something smart. And I am all about what you are doing, and I'm behind you 100%. Let's go. Let's do this. Number three reason to celebrate beginnings is because every day comes down to a series of choices. And remembering and celebrating the good ones should hopefully (laughs) trigger us to want to make more good decisions. So you know how it is when you make the bad decisions and how those can kind of affect you afterwards? A lot of times you don't feel so hot. So for instance, if you overindulge in alcohol, the next day is not always so great. Sort of is a little rough. Or if you eat too much, you a lot of times get sluggish and you don't get anything done. Or, you know, even things like um, gossiping. You know, when you make a bad choice, a lot of times afterwards you're like, oh, why did I do that? I didn't mean to say that about that person or should have kept my mouth shut or why? Or in those other examples I used, you know, if you've yelled at your children and afterwards you just don't feel good about it, right? Those feelings of guilt and feeling like, man, this doesn't feel so hot. It should encourage us to make a different choice, right? Well, the same is true for making the good choices. So, you know, after you get done exercising, you have all those endorphins running through your body. And yeah, it is hard. (laughs) I'm not going to say. I still remember the day um, I used to exercise five days a week. I used to go to a gym to do so. I've been exercising at home now. But um, I used to go to the gym and I remember the day that I got to the gym And I was standing in front of the elliptical and the trainer who, you know, was watching the whole area, he was there. And I'm like, yeah, I just don't want to do this today. And I stood for honestly two or three minutes. And I I must have said to him four times, like, I'm just not feeling it. I don't want to do it. It's taking (laughs) everything in me to get on here. But I finally got on and, you know, there's a reason that you come back to exercise every day. Um, You know, when I started exercising five days a week, so it's fairly recent for me, unfortunately. I had been notoriously going three days a week for about, I know this is really, really bad, but for about 10 minutes or so. (laughs) I used to go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, do a 10-minute mile, maybe 11 minutes, And uh, then I left and I did that for far too long. And then someone very close to me had a heart attack. And while I was in the hospital with them, I noticed that every single cardiologist that came into the room, every single one of them, they looked identical. They were thin, they were fit, they looked vibrant and healthy, and every single one of them said the same thing comes down to diet and exercise, 30 to 45 minutes, three to five days a week. And when they said that, I realized, (laughs) okay, I need to change my life. And honestly, it, it is as clear as day because I remember I flew to a conference in Indianapolis. And when I got home that very next week, 
I started going five days a week to the gym and I did it right up until COVID closed the gym. So, and and the reason was because I saw the healthy lifestyle of those doctors and what it produced. I saw how they looked and how they looked healthy and their words apparently matched their lifestyle because I could see the results and that triggers something. And, you know, when COVID shut the gyms, I had started doing a workout at home, you know, once in a while, and then I just didn't feel it. And there were so many things up in the air. And, you know, so I got out of the habit for almost six months. And one of the things that honestly brought me back to the habit is I was going through some pictures from the year before, and I saw how toned I was. And I thought, oh man, I'm not at all toned anymore. Six months of, you know, not exercising has really taken a toll. And day one was a little bit brutal. Uh, I started a 15-minute exercise workout, and I made it about 12 before I shut it off. Day two was a little bit better. And yeah, I am sore. But you know what? I'm celebrating because I'm back on track. So um, those things that, whatever it is that can really um, trigger you to have that healthy and good response that makes you want to do it again. One of the things that I do, um, and I've done this uh, for a while now, is when I get up in the morning, I try to read my Bible pretty close to right away. And I I don't have my morning cup of coffee until I'm in front of my Bible. I love my morning cup of coffee. And so having my morning cup of coffee at the same time that I'm reading my Bible connects those two things. And that makes, you know, for a very good experience reading my Bible. So anything that you can do to make those healthy choices and those good choices Um, you know, something appealing to you, something to celebrate and something that you love to do, those things are important to come up with and to do and to um, stick with so that your um, brain sort of wants to do these healthy things. Mark Twain said, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. Look, when you get started, you're ahead of everybody who hasn't even thought to get started yet, right? So um, I remember hearing several times something to the point of, you know, okay, so my workout wasn't that great today, but I'm way ahead of the people who are on the couch, right? So, you know, the secret of getting ahead is definitely getting started. Lao Tzu um, said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And who knows where these good choices will take you? You won't know until you get started. One step in front of another, in front of another, in front of another, who knows where you'll go. And that is worth celebrating and getting started. Stephen King said, and oh man, this this says something. He says, the scariest moment. So for Stephen King to say the scariest moment, I'm ready to listen to whatever he says. The scariest moment is always just before you start. And you know what? That is enough to freak most people out so that they never, ever do start. It's comfortable staying in our habits, whatever they are. Our habits are things that we have found comfort in just doing. And to break our habits is uncomfortable. That doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's uncomfortable. And there's a little sense of fear And there's a sense of, I don't know if I can do this. Well, guess what? There's only one way you're going to find out. And that's to try. So get started. And the last quote is from Zig Ziglar. And he said, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. And much like the journey of a thousand steps, listen, you will not know until you get started if you are good at something. You will not know how much you have to learn. You will not know how much you will excel until you actually get started. So my friends, if you've started anything this year, this is my high five to you. And if you haven't started, this is me lighting a match underneath you saying, come on, think about where you want your life to go. Think about who you want to be 
And when you figure that out, figure out the steps that you need to take to get there and then get started. This has been Little Things because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things. Thanks for listening. If you know a friend who needs to hear this message, make sure to share it with them. Please remember to rate and review it so more people can discover little things and hear God's word this way. I can't thank you enough for your prayers. They really keep us going at Time of Grace. You know what else keeps us going? Time of Grace is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to support us, you can find a link on just how to do that in the episode notes. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you.